How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing good. Welcome to another study session, which is going to be somewhat of a conclusion to all of what we've been studying over the past year or so, being the anatomy of the skeleton. Now here on screen, you can see that I'm drawing out some lines using a ruler here. And if you've kept up to date with these study sessions, you'll probably recognize what these lines are. These are the proportional guidelines suggested by Andrew Loomis, something that I covered in one of the first study sessions. And also more recently in a video that I made looking at how to draw the mannequin. So here I've drawn a center line and divided it up into eight equal units. These are referred to as head units because you'll see in a moment when we draw in the skull how it fits within one unit. Therefore the figure is eight head units tall and on a front view like this it's around two head units wide. So I also draw out two more lines at either side like so, creating what is more like a grid. Okay, so what I'm planning to do in this video is to draw out a full front view of the skeleton, starting with the skull, working my way down and drawing in each part in an order that is similar to how I've covered each part in depth in separate videos. I'll be drawing out the simplified skeleton here using the methods that I've covered throughout this series so far, and then I'll develop this and for the sake of a nice looking drawing, I'll draw the skeleton in detail on the opposite page. So with that being said, let's begin with the skull and we'll be focusing on this first section at the top here. Now, as I explained in the study session surrounding the skull, it's one head unit tall and on a front view, around two thirds of a head unit wide. So I'll draw in these lines at either side. Now on a side view, it's around two thirds and two quarters wide. And this shouldn't surprise you if you look at the skull, it's clear to see that it's a, a lot wider on a side and oval in shape. In perspective, the skull can be drawn inside a box at this size. Anyways, going back to this front view, the skull can be divided into thirds like so. These guidelines help to place the features of the skull. Again, this is all covered in its own study session. In the top two units, I'll draw out a circle that would be a sphere in perspective for the cranium, and the bottom third will be for the jaw. On a front view, this is rather straightforward, but you can see on screen how there's a bit more to consider when drawing this in perspective on different angles. As I said though, here I'm only drawing out the simplified skeleton and so I can leave it as is at this stage and I don't need to draw in any of the features. I've more so just set this up so that I can easily add those features later. So now that I've drawn that in, let's move down one third of a head unit which would be the top of the shoulders and the start of the torso. Obviously within this one third there'll be the neck which in this case I just draw in like so. Now I'll also come down to the section below and draw in a line one third up from the bottom of this third unit. Between these two lines will be the rib cage, being around one and one third of a unit tall and around one and one third of a unit wide. I'll draw in these lines which gives me a box to then draw in the rib cage. Again, I covered how to draw the rib cage in its own video and the simplified version is something that I had discovered in Gottfried Barnes' anatomy book. A flat front view like this probably isn't the most effective way to illustrate this simplified form. If I was drawing this in perspective, you can see how it would fit within a box and how it's similar to the shape of a, an upside down egg. One important feature of the simplified rib cage are these planes that exist. These define some key landmarks on the rib cage, as well as making it more manageable when drawing in perspective. Now, the next unit down from this one is where the pelvis is, and this can also be drawn within a box around the same size as the rib cage. The pelvis is one of the more complex parts of the skeleton that I personally have some trouble drawing. I use a method I had learned from Proko referred to as the bucket method, but even still, this simplified pelvis can be difficult to draw, especially when doing so from various angles. It involves a tapered squashed bucket shape with a, a section at the front that is chopped out. And this is then developed further, drawing in some forms which are more similar to that of the pelvis. 
And that's something important to remember. All of these simplified versions for parts of the skeleton are drawn in a way that still represents their realistic forms, and so it makes adding the details later a lot easier than if you were trying to draw this out directly from the start. You can see how I've drawn this bucket out for the pelvis, but for some reason I decided to finish that off later. But that's the three major masses drawn out on this front view. Now of course we need to add some arms and legs. Let's start with the arms and at the top of the arms are the shoulders. For the skeleton we need to draw the shoulder girdle consisting of the scapula and the clavicles. This sits over the rib cage, and it's not too difficult to draw on a front view like this but in perspective it's rather tricky. These bones in general are quite simple so there's not much simplification taking place here, instead I draw the clavicles as circular tubes and the scapula as triangles with a, a slight curve to them. These start at the line I had drawn in one third down from the top of this section down to around the bottom. So now I'll begin to draw out the arms and again the bones for the arms are already quite simple with the exception of the elbow joint where the humerus meets the radius and ulna. Now at the ends of the scapula I draw in two circles for the head of the humerus bones. The first and only bone in the upper arm which comes down to around the bottom of this third unit. Now from here, for the lower section of the arms, there are two bones being the ulna and the radius. And because we are drawing the figure here in the standard anatomical position, these two bones will be side by side like so and come down to just below the pelvis, fitting within this fourth unit. Now depending on the position and angle of the figure you are drawing, these bones cross each other as the arm rotates, and it's something that I discussed more in depth in the study session on the arm bones. Now whilst I'm here, I may as well add the hands, and the hands are always a pain to draw at a small scale like this, and I generally find myself simplifying them down even further, not worrying about the details. The method for drawing out the hands was, again, something that I had learned from Proko. It involves blocking out the metacarpals together for the palm, and each phalanx is drawn separately, connected by a cylinder for a hinge. And as I said, this is great for drawing the hands at a larger scale, but when drawing them like this, which is usually the case, I typically simplify them further, having all of the phalanxes, or fingers should I say, drawn as one block, connecting to the main block for the hand. In a position like this, the hands come down and sit within this fifth unit, below the pelvis. Anyways, now that I'm done drawing out these robot hands, I can start on the legs. Here I take a similar approach to drawing the legs as I did with the arms. The upper section of the legs consists of one large bone called the femur bone and this connects to the sides of the pelvis and like with the humerus connecting to the scapula, because this is also a ball and socket joint I draw in a circle, bringing these bones down to the bottom of the sixth unit. Notice how these bones also curve inwards, these are the largest bones in the human skeleton. So at the end of these, around this line, will be the kneecaps as the femur bone connects to the tibia and the fibula. I draw the patella as a simple upside down triangle, and then I draw in the lower leg bones like so, bringing them down to around one third up from the bottom of this last unit, because we need to save some space for the feet. At the ends of these, I also draw in another circle to represent the ankle joint, and I block out the feet. Here I deal with a, a similar situation to when I was drawing in the hands, where because I'm doing this at a smaller scale, I take a more simplified approach. I recently covered how to draw the bones of the feet, so be sure to watch that video for a, a more in-depth look at how I draw them out on any angle in perspective. Again, this front view isn't the best example, but once I've drawn this in, I'm done with my simplified skeleton. I just go back to that pelvis and finish drawing that in, and once I've done that, I can also draw in the spine that connects up the major masses being the skull, rib cage, and pelvis. Notice how the spine gets thicker as it comes down to the pelvis and connects to the sacrum. 
So there's my simplified skeleton with all of its parts drawn using the many methods that we've covered throughout this series so far. Now, as I said, I'm going to develop this now and use this simplified version to draw the realistic skeleton. Rather than drawing directly over all of this, I'm going to create a copy of it over on the next page by tracing this out on some paper first, and then I can trace this out again on this page. So let's cut to that point and see what we have. Okay, so now I have my simplified skeleton on a front view drawn out on both pages here, and I made sure to only lightly draw out this new one because I'm intending on working over this, but hopefully you can still see this here. Again, I'm going to start with the skull, and as I mentioned when I was drawing this, these divisions are a big help when it comes to positioning its features. I won't discuss everything in too much detail because I do have a, a separate study session just for that, but it's quite satisfying now watching this footage, seeing how the skull fits within these proportional guidelines. I work my way down to the shoulders and start to add some detail to these clavicles, but because the scapula are behind the rib cage, we won't actually see them, only sections of them as they appear between each of the ribs. And speaking of ribs, the rib cage is always a task to draw out in detail like this. In fact, you won't often need to draw the skeleton in such detail unless it's for a, a specific purpose like this. You know, that's the reason why we've taken the time to draw the simplified versions in the first place so that you don't have to deal with all of this unnecessary detail. Although for some examples, it does look good. But I was referring to a, a reference model of a skeleton as I was drawing this out and I was just drawing each section out to suit these proportions. Once I had the rib cage drawn out, I moved onto the arms and started to work over the humerus bones. Again, as I said, there isn't that much difference in comparison to how I had drawn the bones earlier to how I now draw them in detail here. As I work my way down, I also add some detail to the spine, drawing in each of the vertebras and having them get larger in scale as they approach the pelvis. Also notice how the curves of the vertebra begin to curve in different directions to illustrate the S-shaped curve of the spine. I start to draw in the pelvis and I think this is the best example in terms of how these simplified versions show how they translate to the realistic versions. You can see how the hip bones fit within the more geometric forms and I found this to be the same when I was drawing out the pelvis from other angles in that study session. The bucket method is a great way to approach such a, a complex section of the skeleton, so props to Proko for covering that one, and I think Gottfried Barnes invented that one along with the, the simplified rib cage. Anyways, going back to the arms, I'll work over the radius and the ulna, and then I'll deal with the hands. Again, I'm dealing with the same issue here regarding the scale at which I'm drawing the bones of the hands. Obviously, it's not perfect, but I do my best to illustrate that cluster of carpal bones and each individual phalanx. I was also trying to mirror each side of the skeleton and draw these out the same, having it be symmetrical. Here I continue to move down to the legs, adding in some details as I draw over the femur bones and the tibia and the fibula for the lower leg. I was also tasked with drawing in a lot of detail at a small scale when it came to drawing in the bones for the feet. Once I had finished developing these, I was done drawing out the skeleton in detail, and of course that would have been a, a lot harder to do if I didn't have the simplified version to work over. So it makes for quite a, an interesting image now to see these two versions side by side in the sketchbook like this and I'm also going to add some notes around here and annotate this so that I can refer to it at a later date. I will be formatting this image into a study document that will be available on Patreon if you are interested. I also take the time here to draw out the mannequin version which is something that I've recently started to cover on the channel. This mannequin is drawn to the same 8 units and is a, a lot more manageable when drawing in perspective. 
In fact, one process that I'll likely cover in another video is to start by drawing the mannequin to pose the figure in perspective and then within that we'll build on top of it by drawing in the simplified skeleton but as I said that's something that I can look at in another video. As for this one I think I'm going to wrap this up here so I hope you found this useful, if you did then please leave a like and I look forward to continuing to study the anatomy of the human figure on this channel. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.